like, share, subscribe. HCB2 World. Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. So you already know how this goes. New week, new episode of Twin Star Exorcist. And with every new episode, you know you're going to get a review from your boy, all right? So here we go. This week we got episode 49. And let me tell you, it did not disappoint. It had action. It had drama. But most importantly, it had the sweet, sweet moment between Roku and Benio. And you know which one I'm talking about because it's the one we've been waiting for all season. They finally had their moment. And it was beautiful, man. I mean, it was to the point where your boy had to grab a tissue and dab the corner of his eyes. And so, you know, I really enjoyed it. Um, the episode in whole, it was a great episode. I loved everything about it. So, you know, let's jump into this thing. Now, it starts us off, and you got Roku who's trying to free Benio. And, you know, he getting the guy there by himself. Everybody made sacrifices, and as they sacrificed himself, they also gave him a talisman to push him forward. We learned this episode that those guys survived, so that was definitely one thing I was happy about. And I was happy that, you know, Roku finally made it its way there, because honestly, I didn't think he was going to make it, but he made it. So as Roku gets there, he uses a talisman that he got from Suchi Mikado called a, a Spell Disabling Talisman. Unfortunately, that talisman doesn't work, and it seems like Roku is out of options. Luckily for him, Benio, being the smart girl that she is, she actually left him an option without him even knowing. That option ended up being her hairpin. Now, with her hairpin, um, what Benio did was, she realized that Abe no Sebe had been hanging out in the cocoon this whole time, and knowing that she was submitting herself to her, to him, um, she figured that she'd probably be placed in one as well. So to kind of give Roku a way to get her out, what she did was she took her spell power and she connected the two hairpins. So she kept one for herself and had Haniko give the other one to Rokuro. By doing that, the string that her spell power creates leaves a little tiny, tiny hole in the cocoon and hopefully she's counting on Rokuro to get her out using that. Now, not only did he get that talisman from Tsuchi Mikado, one, another thing he got from Tsuchi Mikado was um, Tsuchi Mikado's actual spell power. And if you remember when Sagan gave him a talisman, Sagan told him, with this talisman and Tsuchi Mikado's power, you should be able to use it. So, Rokuro goes ahead and he uses Sagan's um, talisman and it actually gives him Sagan's tiger arm that he always uses. And with that, he's able to kind of pry open the hole a little bit and get Benio out of there. Now, as Roku rolls free in Benio, you got Abe no Seme being installed by Tsuchi Mikado. Now, for me, Tsuchi Mikado's got to be like the MVP of this whole arc or everything that's going on right now. Because despite not having spell power, he's actually been stepping up time and time again, alright? So... Um, you know Abe no Sebe isn't just going to let Benio go without a fight, so Tsuchi Mikado kind of slows him down a little bit. Now, as he slows him down, that actually turns into two badass dragons fighting each other. So that was pretty cool. As the dragon fight is taking place, you got Rokuro kind of yelling at Benio saying, you know, how the hell are you going to give me this hair ornament without telling me what it's for or without giving me any, you know, ideas on how to use it. And basically, Benio's like, dude, what are you tripping about, okay? Yeah, I gave you this and didn't give you any instructions, but you figured it out, you know? Essentially, Benio was counting on Rokuro to know her so much and to know her, you know, so well that she would know, that he would know that there's some kind of plan around this and that she wasn't just giving it to him as a memento to remember her by. So as they argue, you know, they're calling each other idiots and, and Rokuro's kind of laying into her, saying, how could you do this? How could you run the Abe no Seme and this and that? And Benio's like, yo, why are you getting in my case? You know, I can say the same thing to you. Why is it that you left me behind after everything we've been through, after our promise of um, getting through this together? How could you just leave this behind? How could you just leave me behind? And the reason you left me behind is because you thought I would care that you're a Kegade. And she tells him, you know, to me, Roku is Roku. It doesn't matter if you're a Kegade, Cataclysm King, none of that matters. To me, you are you, and you're the person I care about. Now, obviously, hearing this, you know, Roku is really touched because we know how down he was on himself about being a Kegade, and he kind of felt like he had to push everyone away. So hearing this come out of Benio's mouth, it touched his heart a little bit, and he, he actually goes and kisses her. Now, as he's kissing her, you know, she's kind of shocked, and she's like, oh, I wasn't expecting that. So she pushes him off, and then, you know, Roku's like, what, what, why'd you push me off? And then she attacks him. So, in that situation, what you got is basically those two expressing their feelings for each other. You got Roku, who's who's basically loving on Benio because she's accepting him for who he is. And you got Benio kissing Roku because you know that Benio loves him, and so it's kind of like her feelings being returned. Um, as that fight is wrapping up, you know, you got you still got Abe no Seme and Suchi Mikado going at it, and Suchi Mikado is actually getting his butt kicked. Now, Justin looks like he's about to get destroyed by Abe's um, dragon. He actually gets help from a, from a source that I did not see coming, and that was Kamui. 
Now, if you don't know who Kamoi is, he actually plays a major role in the manga, but in the anime, it seems like they lessen his role quite a bit. But he's actually the guy who gives Benio her legs after uh, after she loses them. So, you know, he comes and he, he steps in to face Abe no Seme. And Abe no Seme is like, oh, so you came to save Suchi Mikado. And Suchi Mikado is like, no, dude, he, he's not here to save me. He basically just wants to fight you because he enjoys fighting strong people. So as they're fighting, you know, he starts to get his butt kicked a little bit too. So now that we got the whole Benio and Rokuro situation out of the way, they turn their attention to Abe no Seme, who at this point has already taken care of Suchi Mikado and uh, Kamoi. Now, Kamoi, being the, the basada that he is, you know, he loves fighting, so he's, he's going to keep going after Abe. So he attacks Abe with a kick, and Abe no Seme just blocks it with one finger. But not only does he block it, he actually flicks flicks this guy over the, he actually flicks him over the edge. Now, as he's falling over the edge, he tells Benny and Rokuro to have fun. Basically alluding to seeing them again. So I don't know if that's maybe kind of telling us that there's going to be another season or that that's more to this season. I don't know. I'm assuming that there's 50 episodes. So for now, I'm going to stick with that. So now, with everyone else out of the way, the only ones who can stop Abe no Seme is uh, Benny and Rokuro. Unfortunately, though, it looks like the crystal that was hanging over the Ame no, Ame no Mishihara is actually starting to open up. And so now they find out that this crystal is opening up and, you know, it needs to be stopped. As the crystal opens up, Abe no Seme tells them that it's going to be shooting out something called the the, uh, the Nectar of Kindness. Which, it sounded silly as shit to me, you know, Nectar of Kindness. But I understand why he says that. Now, with this Nectar of Kindness, it's supposed to only trap Yin energy. I mean, Yin energy. Only trap Yang energy within people. Um, eliminating the existence of yin energy. And with no yin energy, you know, there can be no kegere. So as he's, as he's saying this, he tells, he tells Benny and Rokuro that basically there's no reason for them to fight him because one, they're one of the chosen ones, and two, they can't win anyway. So Rokuro argues with him, you know, he's saying not all kegere are bad. Like, why are you saying all kegere are bad? Kegede, you're saying Kegede are bad, but you gotta remember, I myself am a Kegede, but yet you just called me one of the chosen ones, you know? And then they go and they talk about how they met so many Kegede and so many Basada that, that really weren't that bad. And Abe no Seme says, you know, he's basically not trying to hear it. He says, you know, I understand what you're saying, but you gotta understand too that I gave humanity a thousand years to get better. And over that thousand years, not only did they not get better, things got progressively worse. He's saying that, um, you know, with the yin energy, just a little bit of yin energy can start to cause negative emotions in humans, which will then create more yin energy. He says, and he also goes on to say, on top of that, you know, um, you got to realize how bad things have gotten. The Cataclysm King only should have been awakened once it reached a certain amount of yin energy. Now, the fact that it reached that amount proves that humanity really isn't worthy of continuing the way it has continued. Now, in order to kind of pacify that and make things right, I'm going to create a world where there's nothing but happiness, even if it means taking away human beings, you know, um, right of self, a human beings' ability to, to be who they want to be. Now, honestly, Benyo and Rokuro can't let this ride. You know, there's too much at stake. They can't let, they can't let Abe no Seme create a world where people don't have free will and people don't have choice, you know. It eliminates things like falling in love or just actually just being who you are. So they kind of, they join hands and they go to create resonance. As they try to create resonance, um, Abe no Seme quickly wraps them up in these tree branches and they start to get constricted. As they're being constricted, Benio starts to scream out and Abe no Seme basically tells her to shut up. As he tells her to shut up, the tree that's wrapped around her tightens even more and more and she screams louder and louder. As she screams, something snaps in Roku and it looks like for a quick second he awakens a power that we haven't seen before. With that power, he's able to free not only himself, but Benio as well. So I'm really curious to see what that turns into or if that might become some new power next episode that we haven't seen. Now we grant, we know that there's the power of Yang and there's the power of Yen. So maybe, is this some kind of like love power? I don't know. But um, as they, as they finally get free, they connect hands, they do resonance, and they try to stop this crystal from expanding. Because once all the petals from the crystal fall, you know, that's when everything's going to go to shit. So as they're trying to hold it off, they're, re they're, re they're going back through their memories together, you know. How they first met, some of the things they've been through, their vow to get stronger together. 
the raising of side, the people they met, the boss that they met, and just all the experiences that they had, you know. So it's really touching. And while watching that, you can see what kind of bond they actually have. You can see how much they feel for each other and how these two years have actually brought them closer than ever. So they know if they can't stop this thing, you know, all that's going to be wiped away. Those memories will cease to exist and they won't be anything like they are now. So as that's going on, you know, it gets to the point where it looks like they actually might be able to stop it. But Abe no Seme, he's so strong that it, it doesn't last long. You see, like, the last petal start to dip. And that's kind of where the episode ends. Um, in terms of this episode itself, I loved it. I definitely loved the parts with the uh, dragons finding each other. I thought that was really cool. I thought it was pretty funny that uh, Benio said that... That was her first kiss and it wasn't romantic like she expected it to be, you know, because obviously every girl wants their first kiss to be romantic. I mean, I'm not a chick, but I imagine that's what you guys want. So, you know, she said that, but it actually was. It actually was kind of romantic because if you watch the background, you know, you see the flames of the two dragons kind of colliding and creating these cool colors, which kind of look like fireworks. So even though she said she didn't get a romantic first kiss, I kind of feel like she did get a romantic first kiss. Um... Another thing that was pretty curious, one of you guys called out that Kamui was going to show up. It was either one or two of you guys said something about it. So that was definitely a good call on that, you know. Definitely a good call on that. I really hate how unstoppable Abe no Seme seems like he is. I'm sure there's going to be some kind of loophole, some kind of way to stop him. But at this point, man, if he's blocking attacks of, like, powerful Basada with just one finger, like, how can they stop this dude? I don't like the fact that he looks like a Sting knockoff from Fairy Tale. If you haven't seen Fairy Tale, just Google real quick Fairy Tale Sting. He kind of looks like a white hair Sting, so I don't like that fact. But other than that, you know, I love everything about it. It was a great episode. I'm glad that Benio and uh, Roku were finally able to confess to each other. But I don't count that as a full confession. If they don't drop that Daisuke, it's not real to me, all right? Now, if you don't know what Daisuke is, it basically means I love you in Japanese. So if I don't hear those words, it's, it's not a full confession to me. So hopefully next episode we get that. Um, judging by how the previews look, it looks like they might actually be married next episode. I don't know. Maybe I'm jumping to conclusions, but, you know, I'm just going off what I saw. Um, other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed the review. I'm sorry for getting it out late. I am extremely busy, but I definitely wanted to make sure I got this out to you guys. Um, I actually did this video like four times, but the last videos were so long because of all the stuff I got in it that I just decided to redo it and kind of shorten it for you guys. Um, as always, I definitely appreciate you guys tuning in. Definitely appreciate the love. You know, you guys are awesome. I love talking to you guys on here. And, you know, if this is going to be the end of the series next episode, I'm going to miss talking to you guys. But please believe I'm going to replace it with something cool. And I'll give you guys some other animes to check out that I don't review, but I really enjoy. As always, guys, thanks for tuning in. Make sure to hit that like button on your way out. I'm your boy, Heroes Come Back 2. Do great, be great. I'll catch you guys later, man. Peace.